Hi all, welcome to Pondicherry Maritime Academy. I am Dr. Romano, Medical Officer at our college and we are going to be discussing about a case of sudden cardiac arrest or uh, kith and kin who falls unconscious where there is no heartbeat or where there is no breathing, how we are going to deal with the situation. It's, uh, it's per se we are going to deal with a dead person. So what is the first step we do? So today we have a 38 year old Mr. Raj Kumar who was driving his two wheeler suddenly has fallen unconscious right in the middle of the road or for an example on board let's say the same seafarer of a 38 year old has become unconscious who is not breathing and who is not having any uh, pulse. So what is the first aid we do or what is the first step you do? First step, you make sure there is no danger around the patient or the victim. Make sure there is no fire nearby. So I'm checking for the surrounding environment where there is no fire or sharp objects or an electricity short circuit. So first thing what we do, we check for the response of the patient. How are we going to check for the response of the patient? Mr. Rajkumar, Rajkumar, are you all right? Are you all right? So the person is not responding to my... Uh, alertness or he's not alert, he's not responding to my voice calls or he's not responding to the pain stimulus. So next what we are going to do, we are going to activate EMS. Sir, so call for the ambulance or call for the 108. In the next step, so we cannot wait as such or we cannot stay still until the ambulance or your emergency medical help arrives. So until then what we are going to do, we are going to do a body survey or primary survey where we are going to check for your ABC, that is airway, breathing and circulation. According to the 2022 guidelines of American Heart Association, it says that the first thing you check for is pulse. So where and all can we check for pulse in a person? We are going to check for the carotid pulse here because it's a mannequin for an example. So we don't have a radial pulse or a brachial pulse or the femoral or popliteal pulse. So we are going to check for the carotid pulse. How am I going to check for the pulse here? I'm going to use the first three fingers of my hand where I'm going to check for the rate, rhythm and volume. For how many seconds? For 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I did not feel a pulse. Next what I'm going to do, I'm going to check for airway. I'm going to open his mouth and see whether if there is any foreign body obstruction or if there is any swelling or if there is a laryngospasm. So the airway is clear and I'm going to check for his breathing. How and all can we check for the breathing? We can look for the chest wall rise and fall or we can look for the abdomen rise and fall or you can keep the hand back of your hand near the nose of the patient or you can keep the cheek near the nose of the patient and feel for hot air. All this should be completed in the next 10 to 30 seconds. So here the airway is clear, the patient is not breathing and the patient is not having a pulse. So what we are going to do? We are going to start CPR. How are we going to start CPR and where are we going to give the CPR? We are going to start CPR in the top half of the sternum or between the two nipples per se. So this is the region where you can give a CPR. Why are we giving here one point? The heart is in the center of your thorax where it is tilted towards the left. And one more point is the heart, it is a cartilaginous bone. Cartilaginous bone means it, the bone it cannot break or it cannot fracture and it cannot puncture your heart or your lungs. So I'm going to give CPR by interlocking my fingers or I can interlock my wrist and the base of the palm or the heel of my palm will be in contact with the thorax of the patient. Okay. Now I'm going to start giving CPR. So one cycle of CPR will be 30 compressions and two rescue breaths. Here instead of giving mouth to mouth rescue breaths, I'm going to use a Ambu bag. This is a bag and mask ventilation ambu bag where it can deliver 100% oxygen. Okay, so I'm going to start doing CPR. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So if you watch me correctly, my strength is coming from the upper shoulder and my elbows are straight and my wrist is straight. I did not flex my wrist nor my elbows. And what is the depth I gave? I gave at a depth of one and a half to two inches or five to six centimeters. So now I'm going to do a artificial respiration or mouth to mouth breathing or now I'm going to give 
bag and mask ventilation. Before giving bag and mask ventilation, I'm going to do a head tilt and chin lift. Why? So that your airway is in a straight pathway so your lungs can inflate. I'm going to use a technique called easy clamp technique. That is C and this is E. And I'm going to give two pumps. One, two. Next again, I'm going to continue with the CPR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Again, same procedure. Head tilt, chin lift, and we give a easy clamp technique. And one, and two. So now we have learned how to give CPR. And in a minute, you are supposed to give 100 to 120 compressions or 6 to 8 rescue breaths. And uh, how long are you going to give CPR? The person is as such dead. So the CPR really revive a person. Yes, 100% it revives a person depending on the age of the patient, depending on the uh, body status, his health condition, whether it was a sudden cardiac arrest or uh, if it's a, some sort of heart problem, definitely there are chances of 95% he might revive. And how long are we going to give? We are going to give CPR until the patient is regaining his circulation or regaining his breathing. He did not become conscious. And if at all the patient has regained his circulation and his breathing, we are going to put him on recovery position. So recovery position will be in another topic which will be taught later. And uh, the other case scenario is until the medical help arrives. So medical help has to come down, they have to kneel down, they have to continue the CPR, they have to get a handing over from you where they continue, then you can stop giving CPR. Or there is a point where you become really, really exhausted until then you have to continue CPR. So that's it for today. If at all any doubts, kindly do comment and kindly do subscribe our channel. Thank you.